Hello everyone and welcome to the Accuracy and Anti-Air tutorial. Now, in this video, I'm going to take a look at all of the weapons and how their accuracy works and discuss setups and how good they generally are for anti-air duty. But I am going also to focus a bit more on APS because I think that is the weapon type that people want to use for anti-air and get the most frustration out of um, when trying to do anti-air with. Because APS, I mean, I'm going to say it right now, it's not the best option. <laughs> but it is possible to make it work and there are things you can do to improve it. Now, all of the weapons except a couple of missile guidance types rely on detection to be accurate. And so we are going to start with that. And basically we're going to look at detection. So there are three main important things with detection. There is the spectrum, the error, and the number of detections per second. Now the spectrum is pretty simple, really cameras and coincident rangefinders are visual spectrum. Uh, everything infrared is infrared, radar is radar, and then you have the laser rangefinder, which is a little bit different. But basically, some detection is going to be better against some different targets just because, well, for instance, if they are bigger, then radar and regular cameras work better. But if they are small, radar in particular can struggle, visual might not be quite as good, but if they're fast, um, infrared tends to be quite good because friction and jets, which are often used to get vehicles up to speed, produce heat. And so infrared is pretty good against small planes that are, or any vehicle really for that matter, that is quite fast. So picking the right type of detection to begin with is going to be a big help. Now, error, there are two kinds of error. There is angular error and range error. Now, angular error is in relation to the bearing. So where is the enemy? In which direction is the enemy relative to you? And that is important for all of the weapons, really, and also important for setting up uh, trackers, uh, detection trackers, because those also need to be pointed at the target to function. And if you can't point in the right direction, then your trackers won't lock on and, you know, even worse detection, basically. And then you have range detection, which is more important if you are using projectiles. But, you know, you shouldn't skimp too much on range detection as well. Now, generally speaking, cameras and infrared cameras are really good for bearing uh, and very bad for range. Radar is really good for range but not so good for bearing. And then you have the laser range tracker, which is kind of unique. It is, again, very good for range, but not very good for uh, bearing. Then coincidence rangefinders do kind of both, but they don't generate a lot of detections per second, which I'm going to explain momentarily. And sonar is kind of eh at both. Wireless snoopers are very eh at basically everything, but, you know, they will generate basic amounts of detection and then you have the passive detection which is usually pretty eh in terms of accuracy um, but they serve different purpose except the retro reflection uh, sensor which is actually decently accurate for what it does um, but then passive sonar passive radar they can be useful they're more useful for detecting torpedoes and missiles and submarines but generally, your staple is going to be uh, mostly the active detection and the retro-reflection detection. Um, now, I know a popular strategy, by the way, um, for detection is to have things like cameras, uh, camera trackers, and laser rangefinders behind portholes to protect them. Now, do be careful that this can result in your trackers being obscured. That is because they need a direct line of sight on your target and in the case of planes well it's possible that you know if you put enough portals in front and then armor everything it's possible that your trackers won't be able to look far far enough up or sideways or whatever 
to see the planes at all. And then again, worse detections making everything else harder. And then you have the number of detections per second. Again, um, this is actually very important for anti-air or when just generally shooting at fast things. Um, and this is why coincidence rangefinders aren't so great for anti-air because they generate so little detections per second. This is basically how responsive your detection is. Um, the more detections per second, the less gaps in detections and the more precise, not necessarily precise, but um, yeah, the less lag between detections um, and actual movement will occur. It's also usually decent at helping uh, just general accuracy as well. And since, well, a while ago, since uh, detection was updated, now you can't go wrong by just adding more detection, by the way. So volume, volume of detection is uh, actually relevant here. Um, so more detection is better than no detection. And obviously you want at least some variety to have good bearing detection and good range detection. Moving on. And now for our first weapon and really the ideal choice for anti-air is going to be, to probably nobody's surprise, lasers. Why lasers? Well, first of all, as you can see right now on the tooltip, it has fixed accuracy unless you're using a specialty combiner. You have a fixed accuracy of 0.05 degrees. Now, this is, this is very accurate. It's not perfectly accurate, especially at longer ranges. It's going to spread a little bit, but it's still, it's pretty much the most accurate weapon in the game. And there's also the fact that there is zero travel time, right? It is what's called a hit scan weapon. You fire and instantly the same frame, it checks for collision between the beam and your target. And if that, you know, if you're pointed in the right direction, well, you're gonna hit the target. So if you have your detection, as I was saying earlier, and a good laser, then you're set. And if you don't know how to build a laser, well, I just happen to have a recent tutorial on those. So you can just load up my uh, tutorials playlist and take a look. It should answer all of your laser related questions. The next best choice after lasers is going to be particle accelerator cannons or packs. And in this case, it's again because there is zero travel time. However, particle accelerators well, first of all, they lose damage over range, no matter what. And their accuracy is a bit hard to really understand. It's a bit cryptic. Now, you have a choice of different lenses. And those will affect at which range uh, you can really fire at effectively. And the accuracy itself is also controlled by what's called focus on this uh, in this case. So... When you tweak this thing, if you want accuracy, you're going to want focus. Now, it's unclear exactly how focus functions. And even with really high focus, there is always a chance that a particle accelerator beam will, you know, wiggle a bit. Now, generally, the long-range lenses with high focus will be quite accurate, but you can never be quite sure by how much they might wiggle, air quotes. And that's, that's why it's a little bit less ideal compared to lasers. Um, the rate of fire is also usually quite low compared to lasers, so if you miss that makes it even worse. However, particle accelerators, uh, especially when set to EMP or impact, can really disintegrate planes in a single hit. So they're really good for killing in one hit or in a very few hits. The no travel time is ideal. It's another it's can weapon. But you can't quite guarantee the accuracy. So take of that what you will it's still really good it's easily the second best option uh, and it's going to be quite reliable 
Uh, if you're shooting at really small planes from really far away with a really long reload, then you might be disappointed every now and then. But again, you might be very satisfied when you see that plane just explode completely into confetti with absolutely nothing remaining. Now, if you want an option that's less sci-fi, your best option is going to be missiles. I'm going to recommend that you avoid laser or remote guided missiles simply because those rely on your detection. And even if you have relatively precise detection, those two or three meters of error could be enough to create a lot more misses than with the other guidance types. When I was talking about things that don't need detection earlier, I was talking about radar and infrared missiles. Those have pinpoint accuracy, uh, with the slight exception and caveat that radar missiles can actually have error if the enemy is using chaff. Um, but otherwise, they have pinpoint accuracy. Now, radar is extremely reliable because it is really good at acquiring targets. But, by the same token, it's also kind of bad because it's so good at acquiring target that it might get distracted if there is something with a bigger radar signature on the battlefield. So if there is a really big enemy vehicle and it's somewhat in the same, in the same direction as your target for an anti-air strike, uh, chances are that radar missiles will divert and try to hit the larger target. Infrared is however very very good especially because as i was saying earlier fast things uh, are hotter not only because they have they usually have jets but because of the friction mechanic which actually increases their heat signature across the board so infrared missiles are very good now this vehicle in particular uses longer ranged air uh, anti-air missiles but if you can launch missiles from a platform that can chase down your targets and get into range, into short range reliably, then you could and probably should use the short range thrusters. Um, now in terms of missile size, right here I'm showcasing a small missile, but medium missiles can also work. Um, I would probably suggest not using large and to avoid huge missiles for anti-air, but mediums and smalls work quite well. Now, if you haven't watched my video on target prediction guidance and APN, I recommend that you do. But I'm going to say right now that I actually use a bit of a party mix usually for anti-air missiles. I will usually have a mix of radar and infrared. And I will also have a mix of missiles that have APN or prediction guidance. And that is because some planes are very fast, but not very um, maneuverable, not very dodgy. And those are actually kind of hard to hit with APN missiles. And the opposite is true for prediction guidance. So even if the, the enemy plane is relatively slow, if it's really uh, erratic in its movement, you're going to have issues hitting it with a prediction guidance missile. Now, one turns are pretty useful in this case, especially for uh, radar guided missiles, but they're not uh, required if you have your missiles on a turret, which I would actually recommend, even though, you know, I'm preaching and, you know, not actually doing it on my own vehicles. These missiles are very much uh, a vertical launch platform. But if you can put them on a turret, it's going to help. Uh, every little bit helps in this case for missiles, um, for anti-air missiles. Now, speed is going to be really important. As you can see here, um, you should pr pretty much uh, by default uh, max out your thrusts on your variable thrusters. If, you're, you are, if you are using those, of course. And agility is also quite important. And in this case, it means turning thrusters, turning thrusters, turning thrusters. Those are absolutely critical to anti-air missiles. 
The other thing is you're gonna have to accept that you're probably not gonna have as big of a payload as you would normally on a missile. And that's because long missiles have diminishing returns in terms of speed and agility. Um, generally speaking, if you're making for medium missiles, something longer than five meters or thereabout, it's about the limit. Five meters is about the limit for an anti-air missile, basically, for a medium missile. For small missiles, four meters is actually getting pretty long. You could probably run five meter long missiles. But shorter missiles are going to be uh, faster and more agile, but they're going to have even less payload, obviously. And finally, we get to unguided projectiles. Those are the worst options. Uh, of all the options, they are the worst. Um, and right now I'm showing cram cannons. Just don't, please. Uh, it's kind of a meme. You can kind of maybe make it work against something that's not particularly heretic. Um yeah it's no <laughs> please avoid uh you could use a timed fuse with like a big he payload to use it as pretend flak or use a timed frag payload with a fairly high cone but the fact that your the, the shell is going to be 200 meters per second uh at best is really, really gonna hurt your chances to, uh, well, hurting anything. Uh, so yeah, just, just, just avoid. <laughs> Moving on. Th th this shouldn't. No. <laughs> and finally, APS. So, pretty obvious. If you look at the barrel or most parts of the assembly, it's gonna bring up the info card, and you're gonna have an inaccuracy stat. Now, be careful because this doesn't factor in if you don't have enough recoil absorption and if you're using tracers. Case in point, this gun does both of those things. So if we fire it, it goes up to 0.22. Then the recoil fixes itself. The tracer is still affecting it. So it's slowly going back up from 0.1 back to 0.15. And when we fire it's pretty much 0 0.22 degrees sustain. Now, if you're familiar with frag shells, you might wonder if this is 0 0.15 degrees in either direction or 0 0.15 degrees across. And I tested this and it is 0 0.15 degrees across. So you do not need to multiply this by two in any way, shape or form to get the air quotes real spread. And if you want to calculate to know um, what this translates to in meters across a certain range, well, I'm going to put it on screen and I'm going to say it as well. There is this formula, which is 2 times the range times pi divided by 360 times your inaccuracy. Now, there is a simpler, more advanced formula. Please comment if you know it, but this works. And this translates to roughly 0 0.44 meters per 0 0.05 degrees of inaccuracy per 500 meters of range. So if we take this gun, which has 0 0.22 degrees of inaccuracy when it's firing, it's about four and a half times 0 0.05 degrees, which equals roughly two. And let's say we're going to want to find out um, how much it spreads over one kilometer, then we multiply it by two, which is four meters. Now that's four meters across. So if we divide that by two, we get two meters. And basically, if I aim at a block, it's gonna spread shells two meters in any direction from that targeted block. Hopefully that makes sense. And for CWIS, this is gonna be super important. Accuracy is super important because missiles are relatively predictable, but they are tiny compared to most vehicles. So it's really, I can't stress the importance of accuracy enough for SeaWiz, especially for kinetic SeaWiz. 
But for anti-air, it's a little bit more complicated. So we're actually going to take a look at my amazing MS Paint skills to illustrate why it's so difficult. So I drew up a generic annoying plain TM. And this is a bit of a simplification, but it's still going to give us pretty reasonable figures. So let's pretend this plane is moving 50 meters per second, which is honestly pretty slow for most planes. And let's say it's one kilometer away, but your shell also travels at one kilometer per second, which works out to about one second of travel time. Then let's also pretend that this plane is able to turn by 30 degrees up or down in one second. Now, no matter how good of an AI you got for predicting um, where that plane will go, because APS is an unguided projectile with travel time, there is always the risk that the plane will move after you fired, but before the shell hits. And in this case, this time window is one second. And traveling at 50 meters per second, that works out to be 50 meters in this direction, 50 meters in this direction. And because this is going to work out to be 60 degrees and 60 degrees and 60 degrees, that also means that this line is also 50 meters. That's a massive gap. And if we look at the accuracy stat from my previous gun, we established that it spreads shells over roughly four meters, plus whatever from detection. That is minuscule in terms of accuracy compared to problems from predicting where the plane is going to be. And what can you do to fix that? Well, let's see. If we try to reduce um, our spread from accuracy, we might, you know, cut it down by a meter. You know, if we were to take it from 0.22 to 0.12, a whole 0.1 degrees, it's going to reduce it by about a meter. That's nothing. You could miss by 25 meters up or down. So what can you do? Well, it's going to be much better to reduce the travel time, increase the shell speed, and the next part is going to be a bit more debatable because if the plane does move predictably, if it doesn't go up or down, then your accuracy matters the most, right? If it's not dodging at all, then accuracy is going to be the main uh, factor. But if it is moving around, then inaccuracy, spreading shells over a larger area, while it does reduce your accuracy when the shell is moving predictably, it does give you a small chance of happy little accidents, if you will, where you're going to miss where you intended to, uh, to shoot, but it's going to actually hit the plane, right? If we um, add a circle on here uh, that represents how much you spread shells, then there is a chance that you will hit the plane. Now, the other alternative is obviously to use shells with an area of effect, namely timed flak, timed HE, or timed frag, depending on the frag cone you use. And those are all valid things, but the most important thing is going to be shell speed. Unless the plane is perfectly predictable, but then, you know, easy, right? So that's the main problem with accuracy. So if you're you know, you're looking to shoot down a plane that is unpredictable, uh, forget about accuracy. It doesn't matter that much. Shell speed is going to be your main alternative. And the other thing is going to be rate of fire. Because even if the plane is relatively dodgy, there might be times where the plane is slightly predictable or more predictable. And the slower you fire, the less likely you are to be able to fire at the right time to take that opportunity. So rate of fire, shell speed, and accuracy are the three main components, but accuracy is actually the least important aspect when it comes to making an APS for shooting down planes. And that's about it. That's all there is to say about accuracy and all of the weapons. So hopefully that helps. Hopefully you learned a thing. If you did, please you know, do the things to support the channel and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.